Hello, my name is Carol and welcome to your chair yoga practice. Props today are pretty simple. Um, we have a chair. <laughs> Try to get one without um, arms on it if possible, or you can use an ottoman. And also at one point during class, I'll give you the option to stand on a folded blanket or a towel. Um, have a kind of a firm surface so you feel stable enough. Um, it's going to be sand for our palm tree pose. <laughs> That's right, palm tree pose. So just have that off to the side. Today's class is going to be a choose your own adventure theme. I used to love those books where it's like, do you cross the bridge or not? Turn to page 50 or 11. I used to love that stuff. So this is very much choosing what option you want to do. I'll give you, when we come to standing, an option of either two or three movement patterns. Or you could try a mixture of all three. So always during class, I encourage you to honor yourself, um, respect where you are today in this moment, this breath. So beyond just this class, also other classes that I teach and off the mat, really be kind and gentle to yourself. Um, respecting your energy level, knowing when to rest versus when to move or act. So gather your props and let's get started. So we'll begin in a seated position. So we're actually a stopping before we start in order to do something very important as part of your practice, to observe how your body is feeling, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, but also set an intention for class. So I like to first kind of shift around, find the sit bones, get comfortable, feet firmly planted on the floor, hands can be anywhere that feel appropriate for you. You can either close your eyes or leave them open and just observe where you have areas that feel open and inviting, um, that feel really good today, and areas where you feel like they could use a little love and attention, some areas of um, soreness, for example, or a tight muscle. Next is consciously breathing, noticing the breath. I want you to take about 10 rounds of breath here, just noticing where you feel it, maybe in the upper lobes of the lungs. Um, so this would be like upper chest breathing, or maybe lower down around the low ribs or the belly. Noticing the mind space, if your mind is calm, or if it's a little bit busy, like you're flipping through the TV channels. No right or wrong. Again, we're honoring where we are today and being gentle to ourselves. And then just note your emotional state. How are you arriving to class today? Setting your personal intention or using the class intention to choose your own adventure on and off the mat, always honoring, respecting how you feel today. We'll begin with cat cow, so just sit a little further away from the back of the seat so we don't bump it, <laughs> bump into it. Um, we're gonna move from the pelvis, so go forward with the pelvis, tilt the pelvis forward, and then drawing 
the chest open, shoulder blades pull together and descend down your back, and a slight little gaze up, so I'm not dropping my head back dramatically. It's more of lengthening the front of the neck. And then tilt the pelvis back and then round the spine. So we have a lot of spinal flexion ability. So just notice we can make a real big cat here. Maybe it should be lion pose. <laughs> no, lion pose is something else in yoga, actually. All right, so moving from the pelvis first again, tilt the pelvis forward, coming into cow, taking your time, and then tilting the pelvis backwards, rounding into cat. So as you do this, notice if you hold the cow or the cat shape, can you move a little bit more into it? So once we get into the pose, we kind of come to an edge. Then if we soften a little bit and use the breath, can you maybe find some more space in between your shoulder blades and your upper back and cat pose, for example? Go to two more rounds of these. This easy in and out breath. We will move in a vinyasa form breath to movement later in class, but not now. Just let the breath flow in and out of the nose if possible. and then come up right after you're finished. And we'll take torso circles. So you still notice there's cat cow in there. <laughs> so I like to take my hands around where my little ribs kind of are, you know, just kind of judge that for you. And I'm going to stick my little ribs out. I'm gonna mirror you, so to the right, as if I'm gonna touch a point of light from my low ribs to the side wall. And then go back, scoop it, engage the abdominals here. Taking my rib cage to the left and then forward. So like you're tracing the inside of a teeny tiny hula hoop. Going around. And just notice where it feels smooth or where you get a little stuck. You can always release your hands. And then take about three torso circles in the opposite direction. And notice if you want to allow your shoulders to get into it. Now, this is how it feels for you. I'm going to say that a lot during class. It's going to get super annoying, but very supportive. <laughs> All right, sit up nice and tall. We're going to take our half moon flow. So I'm just going to sit a little bit back on my chair seat so I feel like my thighs are um, stable and grounded because our arms are going to go up in the air. So we're gonna come up and clap the hands. So it's a little flow, so clap the hands and then drop the right arm, ease into a side stretch on the left side. Come back, clap the hands. <laughs> Clapping's fun in yoga. <laughs> you almost feel like you're getting away with something, making noise. Clap, center, and then hands to heart center. And then just repeat this pattern. So clap. It doesn't matter if you're going to the left or right first. Just pick a side and flow. All right. Two more times here, clapping as you go up and taking our side bends. I'm trying to clap a little bit uh, softer <laughs> so it doesn't come up too loud on the microphone. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me clapping. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. All right. Let's windshield wiper the legs. So again, I'm gonna to come to the edge of the seat. My feet are fairly wide and I'm just gonna roll onto the blade edges of my feet, just back and forth. Just getting into the hip rotators here. Just loosening up. You could hold on to the edges of the, of the seat if that feels good. Just a couple more. And then let's go back to the upper body, having a spinal twist. Spinal twist always feels so good to me. All right, so instead of extending the arms straight, we're gonna do cactus or goalpost arms. 
So this is our little pattern. We're going to turn to one direction, center, turn to the other direction, center, and then lower the hands down. So come back to your cactus arms, one direction, other direction, rotating around the low rib cage. Do this a couple more times. Exhale as you turn. Awesome job. All right, take some shoulder rolls after that. Now let's do some uh, a Brahma Mudra. We'll do this at the beginning of class and also at the end of class. So notice if there is any change to how you experience this breath. Again, I will be mirroring you. So when I say turn to the right, my chin's going to go that way. <laughs> so we're going to use a hand gesture, neck movement, but also a bija sound, seed sound as well. And this represents observing everything in four directions. I'll just start it and then join when you can. Um, the pattern of the breath will be an inhale to turn the head and then an exhale with a sound to come back to center. And we'll hold our hand mudra as we do so. So both hands, you're going to fold in the thumb. So the top of the thumb as much as possible is at the base of the little finger. And then you're just folding the rest of the fingers down over the thumb. You're going to draw the hands like the, the knuckles together and you're just going to hold them with the palms face up. All right, so let's start and just join when you can. Uh... Do this one more with me making the sounds, then I'll leave it uh, silent for you to hear yourself. Finish up your pranayama, your Brahma mudra breath. And let's go back to the lower body. So I'm going to lean slightly forward. Working the feet, I want you to do this flow with me for your feet and ankles, knowing that you can move your feet further away from you and makes it slightly easier for some of these moves, or pull it 
um, back. So you might need to like reposition your feet for each one of these. So first we're gonna do heel lifts. So I'm gonna take my feet actually a little bit closer to my body. I'm gonna lean forward just to apply a little bit of pressure so it's harder <laughs> to do the heel lifts. So I'm pressing down as I'm trying to lift my heels up off the floor and then slowly lowering them down. So sometimes we do this standing, you could always do this seated as well. So you don't have to have an exact number. I'm just gonna do a few of these, give you time to play. Just lifting and lowering the heel. I'm gonna to turn to the side just so you get a nice view of that. And then next we're just going to try to lift and spread the toes. They may not come all uh, that far. <laughs> That's, that's okay. <laughs> just do your best. So the ball of the foot to heel is down on your sticky mat, but you're just lifting and spreading the toes. And if you don't do these very often, these become quite tiring to your feet. Um, you'll feel the top of your feet engaged really quickly. Now let's try to, so I'm gonna walk my feet forward, try to lift everything except the heels. So this is our dorsiflexion. A few more times. All right, now let's bring one knee into chest. So I'm gonna do what you're, right leg would be, and stir the pot with the lower leg, like a big soup pot, right? <laughs> and go the other direction. You can make tiny circles or make them big. And then bring the same leg up into a figure four as help it out and find some very slow ankle um, circles. You can hold on to the foot and kind of help it out with the ankle circles or leave it free flowing. And then reverse your direction. Take a few the opposite way. Just notice if this feels nice <laughs> or not, if you're getting a lot of clicks and pops. Sometimes the angles are super chatty. <laughs> All right, taking the same leg straight forward, position yourself appropriately on the chair. You're gonna point and flex the ankle. I'm gonna to turn to the side just so you can see my foot, just in case, point and flex. And then leave the toes up towards the ceiling for a hamstring stretch, lean slightly forward. Just trying for as straight of a leg as possible today. Really engage the quad here so the top of your thigh should um, feel engaged, feel a little bit tight. let that go. Now we got second side. Hold on to the back of the leg and stir the pot. This one just always feels fun to me. All right, go the other direction. All right, figure four with that leg, help it out. And then ankle circles, you can hold onto your foot or just let it go. and then reverse the direction. If I pay attention, I probably always start with like clockwise or something if I really pay attention. I'm not gonna get that nitpicky on you today. All right, extend the leg, point and flex the ankle. And then try to hold Toes point to the ceiling, engage the quad. You can lean slightly forward and get that back of the leg line release. All right, 
let it go. I like to start marching, make any other movements that feel good, and then we're going to meet in a standing position with our chair at the very top short end of the mat and the back of the seat um, facing you. All right, so I'll adjust my camera and I'll be right there. All right, we made it to standing, yay! <laughs> All right, let's take some uh, movements in mountain pose and then we'll use the back of our chair. So since my back of my chair is hard metal, um, I may want to put a blanket um, to pad it. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, so just leave that there in case you have a hard um, back of your chair. So standing in mountain pose, I'm just going to take fingertip to shoulders and do little back strokes, allowing my torso to move. So my chest opens up to the left and to the right. As I'm taking these big shoulder rolls. And I could stay here or open up your arms. So I'm stepping a little forward so I don't hit my <laughs> closet door. Let's take big back strokes. And then stand with your feet about hip distance or a little wider, soft bend to the knees, and make some figure eights or infinity signs with your hips. Just a little mini warm up. Just moving the body a little bit, trans transition from seated to standing, and then reverse the infinity sign. And then we're gonna bring our thighs together, bend the knees, and like little skiers, we're gonna circle the knees. You're also circling the ankles here. And the feet are moving around. And then other direction, swoosh. <laughs> All right, so let's face the back of the chair seat. So this is your first choose your own adventure officially. <laughs> so I'll give you options one to three. Is the third option better than the first one? No, <laughs> they're just different. You can do all three. I'll be flowing through all three to remind you what they are. Or you can pick one and stick with it. Um, this way you can actually do this video multiple times and get a different experience. So do the one that works for you today. Take warrior three. So I'm going to step my right leg back, comfortable distance, and turn the back toes out slightly. The front foot, I'm going to widen um, out to the side just to give myself enough space so I don't feel like I'm on a tightrope. So it should feel fairly stable here. Um, the back of the chair is there for you. Now, your first option is to bend the front knee, maintain the warrior one stance. And if you're staying here, you could play around with even bringing that back foot slightly back to make a, a, a longer stance. As long as the heel is down to the ground, you have a really strong back leg. Now the arms are gonna be inhaling up and exhaling, leaning forward, airplane the arms. My belly is not dropping to the floor here. My, my abdominals are in tight. So inhale is here and exhale is here. I'm just gonna do this a couple more times to see your option one. Option two will be to flow in and out of warrior one or warrior three. For this, I highly suggest a shorter stance. <laughs> Otherwise, you're kinda of doing this hop, hop, hop thing. And make sure that you're a comfortable distance away from the chair. So I'm gonna take a very short warrior one and then straighten my front leg, I'm gonna point my back toes down to the floor for warrior three, and then back again. So inhale here, and then exhale, warrior three. Then the front knee, warrior one. Strain the front leg, lift the back leg, warrior three. Just going back and forth. Now number three is to really combine the two. So you're doing the upper body 
the arms, either if you're holding on, so just do one arm, or you could do both, so I'll show you both. So warrior one to warrior three, or both arms, warrior one to warrior three, but in this case, you know, you wouldn't be using the chair unless you felt off balance. That front leg's gonna get super tired, so take breaks. So I'm gonna take a little break right now. And I'm going to go through all the options. I'm gonna show about three rounds per option. Do as many as you wish. So I promise you won't walk funny for the rest of the day if we do, you know, eight rounds on this side, but six rounds on the other leg, so don't worry about it too much. I never saw a complaint by anyone. So option one again. So just play around, this should feel playful. Trying to move breath to movement as much as you can. All right, now I'm just gonna pause for a moment in mountain pose just to give you enough time. So there's never a rush. We're going to do pyramid pose to revolve triangle. So I'm gonna pad on the back of my seat and I'll show you that in a moment. So we had our right leg back. We're gonna stay, stay on that side. So right leg back, pyramid pose, um, it's not a, a very large distance. You gotta keep your back heel down. But instead of warrior one where the back foot is angled out, almost at a 45, um, pyramid is just slightly out. Um, really, the foot looks like it's pretty much facing forward. So again, slight turn out of the back foot or facing forward. So your pyramid pose straight legs are just scissored apart. Your forearms can be down, so this is hence why I <laughs> padded my seat. Your forearms can be down, or you can go a little further down. I'm gonna always adjust to where you are. So I'm hinging from my front hip crease, and you could rest the forearm, uh, forehead down to the forearms. Oh, that's kind of hard to say, forehead down to forearms. And I'm really maintaining both feet pushing down into the mat. Now your other option, option two, would be to get more of a upper body stretch. So it almost looks like we're doing a half downward facing dog with one leg forward. So I'm pressing my palms into the back of the seat this time. You could stay here. So pick which one feels good or do both. You have plenty of time. Obviously, if you're going in between the poses, adjust your legs to the appropriate distance. And then next we're gonna add revolve triangle. So again, you're either closer to your chair or you're further back. I'll show both. And you're going to turn towards your left leg. So that's your front leg. So I'm going to just elongate my one arm, hand on the hip and turn, and then allow my right hip to turn with me. So the right hip of the back leg drops down as I twist. So either with the leg, the arm straight, or if you're coming into forearm here, this one's often very nice. You are here, a little bit up higher with your torso. So sorry, I'm turning away from you. <laughs> I don't like to turn away from you.
completely unwind from that, come back and shake it out. Good news. We got the second side to do. <laughs> so I'm not going to go through all the options um, as slow as I did on the first side. So play around. So again, option one is, so now warrior one with the left leg back. And I'm just working the arms. Inhale here, exhale, airplane. Or I'm going warrior one, holding onto the chair the entire time, or warrior three. So basically, I'm forgetting about the arms here. Or I'm trying to do some for the arms, some form of the arms, meaning both or a combo. You have one and then you're holding on. So take your time, play around, choose your own adventure. <laughs> Take your time. I'm just going to give a little pause here. So you can pause with me or continue your flow that you chose. Now still left leg back, toes slightly out or turn them so they point forward. Make sure you have enough distance between your left and right foot. And then either pyramid, I actually like this one a lot. With your forearms down the back of the seat where you could rest your head or get the stretch. You don't have to do the same on this side as that you did on the other side. Whatever feels good for this side, the sides are different, they'll feel different. Really check in, especially if there's a tendency for the front foot to um, sickle out towards the little toe side, really plant it down, that big toe ball mound to the floor. That gets a suction cup. more breaths here. Then we're going to move on to our revolved triangle. I know it's not called revolved pyramid, even though you're going from pyramid pose. So we're going to turn towards our right, because that's our right leg in front. So my hand's going to go to the hip and I'm going to turn. And I'm going to allow my left side of my pelvis, or my left hip if you want to think of it that way, to drop down to the floor. So turn with me. Again, either forearm down, or you could get a little bit more extension, pressing palm into the back of the chair seat. It's definitely a different experience on the shoulder. I'm gonna go back to the one I like. <laughs> I'm choosing my own adventure. <laughs> Stay here. And then unwind and then stand up. Ooh, take a moment. <laughs> We're going to face the long side of the mat. I'm going to move this off to my chair seat. For breath to movement agility practice. So again, you're going to have three choices here. You're going to pick the one that works for you. Um, we have a lot of twisting actions, so a little bit of a theme of class today. So the twist should feel fairly fluid. So I'm going to stand so my, uh, this would be your right hip is next to the chair and I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna really make sure that leg is strong and the hip is underneath me. And then I'm gonna play around with 
maybe just lifting the heel. So the toes are on the floor. Inhale here for cactus arms and then twisting towards the left, towards that leg that I'm either toes on the ground or just lifting off, hovering slightly. Inhale back to center and exhale, release back to mountain pose. So I'll do that one again. Inhale, foot comes up, maybe heel comes up only. Exhale, twist. Inhale back to center and exhale, lower down to mountain pose. Now your second option is to lift the knee up to what we call one-legged mountain pose. So you're inhaling here, exhaling just the upper body twist. The leg is not opening to the side. Inhale back to center and exhale, release down. Inhale here, knee to chest, knee stays facing forward as you exhale and turn. <laughs> you could always half cactus arm and hold on. I'm gonna do that. Inhale back to center. Exhale, release. Or as you twist, you can extend that leg. So inhale, I'm gonna hold on. Inhale here. Exhale, twist, extend. Inhale, re-bend back to center and exhale, lower down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So maybe you did all three with me. Uh, maybe you wanna decide now which one you wanna do. So I'll just kind of flow through a couple um, rounds of each one. It's always an exhale to twist, inhale to unwind if you're not sure of the breath pattern. Shake it out when you're done. Feel free to continue on on that side. Take your time. Just gonna adjust so I could do the other side. Still with my very beloved chair support. <laughs> it feels good to have some support. That is an agility practice because we're moving while we're balancing. So they are quite difficult sometimes. All right. So now we're gonna take the other side, so I'm standing on what would be your left leg. Really strong leg. Just gonna to try to tap the toe, turn towards the right. Inhale back to center and release. Inhale here, exhale, twist. Inhale, center, exhale, release. Or try lifting the knee. Even teachers fall, oh my goodness. Or extend the leg. your time. All right. And when you are done, so I adjusted my chair so it's just facing uh, the same direction as me. Um, chair seat facing the long edge of the mat. And you could always hold on to the the back of the chair um, for this or just half your toe down. 
So there's only one option for this. You either <laughs> leave the toe down or you lift the toe. <laughs> Not too many options, I know. So we're going into goddess and then star to shooting star. So my feet are comfortable distance wide. My toes are turned out. I'm going to take my fingertips to my shoulders. And then I'm going to sink down into goddess. I'm going to make sure I feel comfortable there. And as I come up to star pose, I'm going to lift one heel, the absent arm extend. So I'm making like a, a diagonal with my body. Coming back to center and sinking down. Coming back up, squeeze the glutes to come up, lifting the heel, extending opposite arm. So if my left heel is lifted, my right arm is extended. And then center and then down again. So that's our little patterns called goddess two shooting star. Now, if you want to lift the leg, you're going to need to bring your legs in a little bit. So shorten your stance. I'm going to sink down the goddess. I'm going to try to lift the leg just out to the side. Lower down, squat, and then lift. Just hold on to your chair for this. You put your chair in front of you for this. Woo! <laughs> and if you get off balance, just laugh. I like to say, and I just cheated, I hold, held on to my wall. <laughs> it's not cheating, I'm just, I'm teasing you to have fun because there's a lot of balancing in this and it could become frustrating. But if you get off balance, it's just gravity saying hello. I love that saying. All right, I'm gonna go back to lifting heel. All right, <laughs> and then when you are done, shake it out. Finding warrior two, so a lot of standing today. Um, so my foot is facing the chair. My other leg is out. Why is this gonna go today? Um, eventually we're gonna go into triangle, which means we'll put our hand on the seat. So just make sure it's within uh, hand distance. The back toe is slightly in, and then bend the knee into warrior two. Now if your arms are tired, keep them down. If you want to, you could even extend and put palms up. A little different experience than palms down for warrior two. Your pelvis is forward on angle, but the turn that we're working around, the twist a lot, is around the low rib cage. So your sternum, your pointy land, bony landmark, is facing the long side of the mat. There's this little twist. You can actually see that I'm twisting because of the ripples in my top. Let's stay, the pelvis stays where it is. Don't try to manually manipulate the pelvis ever. <laughs> Let's free the pelvis, let it move. All right, stray the front leg. I'm gonna shift in and out of triangle. So I wanna bring that chair a little bit closer to you. Bending into the front hip crease and then coming back up. So I don't like to just plop into triangle pose. I like to just feel my way into it. When you feel ready for triangle pose, you're going to put your hand on the chair or fist if your wrist doesn't feel good today. Again, I'm going to turn the chest, not, the, not manually moving the pelvis. Turn around the low rib cage, turn the chest up toward the ceiling. My head can remain neutral. I actually really like keeping the head, the chin um, centered for these poses. And then bend the front knee to come up. Let toe heel your feet back together. Pause in mountain pose, observe the legs. Observe the knees, ankles, any feedback you're getting there. I'm going to take this on the other side. If you enjoyed the chair, just move it. After this, we're doing the palm tree pose, so I <laughs> get excited. All right, a lot of balancing, yeah. I always type these up. I literally write them out. I type them up in Word and print them out. I'm like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks reasonable. 
And then when I actually teach them, I'm like, wow, that was a lot of, a lot of balancing there. All right, so front knee is bent, back toes slightly in, pelvis is pointing forward on a diagonal with a twist, you can see. So right now I'm shoulders over hips, and now I'm twisting around the lower rib cage. Arms can go out to the sides, palms up if you wish. Do that bend in my front knee. You can notice you can even bend it so the knee kind of lightly taps the chair, like a little bit of feedback there is nice. And then straighten the front leg. If you want to pull in the chair, if your chair is easy to pull in, um, if, if it's too heavy, you might need to just walk forward a bit. I'm just going to bend into the front hip crease, which is at the top of the thigh, back and forth until I feel ready to hold triangle. Straighten both legs. Hold when you're ready. And then turn the chest up towards the ceiling in that direction. It's not going to point directly towards the ceiling, no. But just in that direction. And twist again around the lower rib cage. Something that we've been working on throughout class today. And slowly bend the front knee, coming out of this. All right, so this is your last choice, <laughs> last final choice. Um, your chair could be there if you want to hold onto it or not. Um, I'm going to try not to. You take regular tree pose, so this is our static balance, um, with support of the chair or wall, um, with just the foot on the mat. So that's going to be regular tree pose or making option two sound really appealing. We're gonna take a piece of sand. Uh-huh, yep, you, you heard me. <laughs> Obviously, this is more than just a blanket. This is a piece of premium Florida sand. <laughs> uh, we're gonna stand on it, <laughs> both feet. Like, man, she is losing it today. All right, and palm tree pose just means that we're gonna be unstable, um, but also you can add a little bit of fun by like waving your arms as if you're like flowing in the breeze. So I say static balance, but uh, we're not rocks. We move. <laughs> Again, gravity says hi, say hi back, it's fine. So pick a leg, stand at it. Really not trying to over cue this one. Your toe can be down, it could be up. Um, you can grab the foot and bring it up higher on your thigh. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. I like to let my body do the work and then hold it. And if you get a cramp like I am, just release it or even go to the other side and try that. So the toes that are on the leg are pointing downwards towards the floor with the sand on it if you're doing palm tree. Again, your arms can flow in the breeze. Ooh. <laughs> Yoga can be fun. All right. I promise a really nice calm cool down after this. <laughs> We're going to relax our nervous system from all the balancing. Just do both sides. Take your time. And if you want to do both as a comparison, to see how hard it is to balance in sand um, versus on the floor, you can. I'll tell this sand mom pose and give you just 
few more seconds here. You know, play around both sides. That's how it feels. And when you feel ready, we'll meet in a seated position. Just give me enough time to change out my camera. <laughs> I'll see you soon. All right, so we're gonna do a very simple cool down today. We're actually gonna do tapping, which taps into, no pun intended, your vagal nerve, um, which actually can cool or calm down your nervous system. And then we will do the Brahma Mudra again, and then a moment of um, silence to close out class. So as you're tapping, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'll tell you right now. I'm gonna take my fingers. You could either take them and kind of go at different rates, or all the fingers can be together and you're tapping one hand and then the other. So see which one works for you. So either twinkle fingers <laughs> and you're just going around your head for now, just explore or fingers all together. And we're not tapping hard. <laughs> I should have said that first, right? <laughs> so this is just a nice little stimulation to deregulate the nervous system. So at any point if your arms get tired, which they will, you just bring them down, do some shoulder rolls, and then come back to it. So you can stay on the scalp or you can move around like the face, the jaw. Um, if you're having any sinus issues, you can do around the nose, under the eyes. And then any tension um, in your thoughts, I always find it nice to go on the forehead to the temples. Again, very gently, tap, tap, tap. You can go down the neck. And when you get to the ears, sometimes I like to pause and just kind of rub them. I always say, if I don't rub my own ears, who's doing it for me, right? <laughs> and just some other options, I'm gonna take some shoulder rolls is you could um, play your own drum. So this is your sternum here and your collarbones go out to the tip of your shoulders. So you can just go up and down or again, all the fingers playing together. I'm trying to avoid tapping my microphone. <laughs> you can go across the collarbones and back and then tap in the sternum. So note, observe for a second how hard you're tapping and the rate or the pace at which you're tapping. So sometimes you go in there and you're really banging <laughs> and going really fast. So I just want you to shift and try something different. So a little lighter, a little bit more gentle, a little slower. Just change it up. And then if you want to continue tapping or if there's an area that you didn't get to yet, feel free. We're going to take about 15 rounds of conscious breathing. So we're not doing our pranayama yet that we did at the start of class. We'll repeat that. I just want you to notice your breath for 15 breath cycles. So position yourself so you're comfortable on your chair. And I'll stay silent and give you enough time for those.
Yogati, you can take your hand part of the mudra, the tip of the thumb to the base of the little finger, curl the other fingers over, turn your knuckles towards each other, palms up. And then I'll do the seed sound for two rounds, and then I will continue the neck movement, staying silent so you can hear yourself. Um, do at least three rounds or more, if you feel like it, of the pranayama. Afterwards, we'll take a silent meditation where I encourage you to soften your gaze or close your eyes. And during that time, we're shifting from doing to being, from achieving to receiving. And then we'll close out class. So I'll again do a couple rounds and then leave you to do um, around three more if you wish. Uh... slowly open your eyes just start to make little shifts around your chair and we'll close out class putting hands at heart center on jolly mudra and honor and celebration of our practice together the light the love the teacher in me sees and honors the light the love the teacher in you namaste Thank you so much. I 
greatly appreciate you sharing your most valuable uh, commodity, your time with me doing these videos. If you have any questions, feedback, other videos that you would like to see, never hesitate to email me, please. I love hearing from my students. <laughs> so carolbaileyyoga at gmail.com. Take care.